adding glass look with reflection and glare can be a great way of enhancing your portrait images. And actually, if you know a few simple steps, it can be easily done using Luminar Neo. So come and join me. I'm going to show you these steps and you're going to master this technique in a few minutes. And just like that, moving straight into Luminar Neo, where we starting in the catalog module. Just like always, we are looking at our sample files, which this time will include the lady in a cafe, the image we're going to use for the reflection, and maybe we also going to add a little glow. So to get the sample files so you can follow me on your own computer, simply move into the description of this video, follow the link there and download them now. Once you get them, import the image with the lady, which should be called sample file. And once you're ready, let's go ahead and move it into the edit module. Now, looking at the image, it will work very well. It almost looks like she is sitting in front of the window, looking outside of it. And what we will be doing one more time, we will be creating a window reflection. So basically, we will create an illusion that there is a glass between the photographer and the subject or the model. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use overlay, blend modes and so on. But first thing we're going to do, we're just going to crop the image a little bit closer towards her face. And to do that, well, let's go into the editing toolbar, open the crop AI tool and we can choose different ratio. But for time being, let's leave it on the original. And very simply, we're just going to grab the little handle and bring it in. So I'm thinking somewhere around here. Now, if we position it in such a way that the kind of cross of the rule of thirds, the golden point will be closer towards her eye here, it will just work a little bit better. So I think somewhere like this, you can go really close and be precise with it. But I think this is more than enough um, and it will work very well. For another reason also, actually this part in front, which is a little bit out of focus, will give us an illusion of the part in front of the window. So I think that will work well. Now, once we finish with the cropping and again, you can crop it however you like, but this is what I like. So once we finish, we can click on apply or if we want to be really cool, just hit the enter on your keyboard. So it will take a moment and now we have the image crop. So it's time to move into our layers panel where now we're going to be creating the reflection. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to click on the plus sign. And here we're going to click on load image from here. I want you to navigate towards the location of the sample files. And here we're going to select yeah, the image we're going to use for the reflection. Once it's selected, simply click on open. Since we are already here, let's click on load image one more time, select the glow and add it to. Once you have both of the layers in, let's select the skyline, uh, simply click on it. And in a few seconds, it will be added to our image and it's already here. You can see that right now it's selected. It has the orange frame around it in the layers as well as on the image. Now, whenever you see reflection in a window, it actually generally is the other way around. It's flipped. So actually, let's do the same. Let's go into layer properties and simply flip the reflection vertically or horizontally. In fact, <laughs> horizontally. Once we have that done, now we need to position it the way we want. So Let's zoom out. We can do that with the wheel on our mouse or use the simple command or control minus. And once we zoom out, we actually want to take the reflection layer and make it much bigger. So really, really bigger somewhere around here. Now let's make it maybe even a little bit bigger. I really want a lot of these uh, skyscrapers and houses to be in front of her. I think maybe probably yeah, somewhere around here or maybe even further. Um, yeah, let's go for something like this. Now you will see that as we're going to work with the image, it's generally a good idea if some of the houses and darker parts are over her face and that way it will just work a little bit better. So let's go ahead and let's say that we're going to go for this position here. Now, once we finish, we can go back to layer properties where now we need to adjust the blend mode. Blend mode just under the opacity slider. We're going to click on the drop down box and we're going to switch it from normal into the screen. Now, screen blend mode in general, brighten the layer. So let's do that. Let's click on that. And you can see it's already starting to look a little bit better. 
while we're doing all of this, you can still position the layer and see what works for you. You can make it a little bit smaller if you think that that will work better. Whatever you think. I think somewhere around here. Back to our layer properties, where now we're also going to increase the opacity. Now, we're not going to go all the way because then we will lose all the details. But I'm thinking somewhere around, let's have a look, for the time being, around, yeah, let's say around 60. Now, looking at it, maybe we will make it a little bit bigger and just position it, yeah, let's say here. Once we have that, we can still increase it a little bit. And I think for the initial placement and adjustments, we are good. So we need to continue. We want to make it more realistic, right? <laughs> so to do that, we're going to close the layer properties. We still have our layer with the reflection selected. And the next thing we need to do is to darken the bottom. And by darkening the bottom of the reflection layer, we will actually bring back some of the details. And the reason is that the screen blend mode brings the bright parts. So we will darken the bottom and that way we will get details back at this part. Now, maybe the theoretical part isn't great. So let me show you in example. So still make sure you have the layer with the reflection selected and into the main editing toolbar, open the develop tool and start by bringing the exposure down. Let's have a look at it. When I bring it down, you will see that if I really go crazy, we will pretty much get our image back. You can see that the subject is now there and it looks better. However, we don't want this all across the image. We only want it at the bottom. So let's bring the exposure back up. I'm thinking somewhere around. Let's have a look at it. Prob probably minus two. Yeah, I think around minus two looks good. Once happy with that, into the masking where we're going to use the linear gradient. So let's click on that. Once we have it selected, we need to click and drag it. Now we want most of the gradient to be at the bottom and then very much gradually bring the dark gradient and mask up. So let's have a look at it. When I do this, we're going to be creating something like this. We want a big gradient. We want a nice soft transition here. And now we can actually bring it up. I'm thinking somewhere around here. And I think that will work quite well. So our gradient right here. This is where we have the 100% of the mask of the dark adjustment of the development. Then we go from 100 to 0 with the 50% in the middle. With that being done, we can click on a linear gradient or, or the arrow next to it. And that will bring us back. So how does it look? Much better. Not 100% there yet, but much better. If we need, we can still go back again with another linear gradient and drag it again. So we can go for something like this and see if that will work. Once happy, again, back and see the adjustment. Now we can again zoom out a little bit and back into the adjustments where we can again darken the bottom a little bit more. So I'm thinking around, yeah, around here for the time being, or maybe a little darker. So minus 2.5. Five, zero. Zooming out, once we're here, let's close the develop tool and let's again select our layer, open the layer properties and one more time position it around to see what works the best. For me, I really like this house, so I want it there, but I also want her face to have a detail. So I'm just trying to find the right position. If we need, we need to, or we can zoom back out a little bit more, maybe bring it down one more time and just get something like yeah, let's go for something like this. Okay, better. Now, so we have done the linear gradient. However, what we can also do, we can use a brush and actually darken her face a little bit to bring back some details there again. And to do this, we still have our layer with the reflection selected. And instead of creating another develop tool, we're going to go into the edits where we already have the develop tool adjusted with the minus exposure. So this time, just going into the masking, Select the brush, make sure that you are on paint and size. Well, we're going to adjust that as we go. Softness on 100 and strength. I would start somewhere around 35. Now, one click. And after the one click, we can now brush and basically just work the darker area into the face to bring back the details there. If you feel that there are other parts you want to bring back in, you can brush over them as well. But for me, just something like this will make a little difference and it will just help for the overall look. So something like this. So it's looking much better already. 
let's have a look at the before and after, and you can definitely see the difference. Once done with this, we can close the develop tool, back to the tools, and now we're going to be focusing on the layer with the subject, because there is also another thing you can do to make our subject stand out on the image. And to do this, once we have the layer selected, into our main editing toolbar, develop tool again, and this time we're actually going to go into the curves. So let's open the curves. And what we're going to do in the curves, we're going to stay on our black and white curve. And we're just going to take the little dot all the way at the bottom left, and we're going to drag it a little bit into the middle. And by doing that, you will notice that we again getting more details back. So it looks quite good. Uh, how much of it you want is really up to you. But for me, I think probably, yeah, somewhere around here. At the same time, now we were adjusting the shadows, we can also adjust our highlights. So let's take our highlights and bring them down as well, probably somewhere around here. So that looks better. Now, by doing that, we have lost a little bit of the brightness there. So let's go back to light and just add a touch of brightness. If you want, you can also adjust the shadows, see if you increase them, if you get some details back and maybe bring down the highlights just a little bit. So that's that. That's now we can close the develop tool and we are done adjusting the subject. Now that's almost it. However, looking at the reflection, you can see that it's well too defined. It looks too detailed. It doesn't look very realistic. So what we need to do, we need to apply some blur to it. Let's go back, select our reflection. And with that, we can go back to our editing toolbar, scroll down all the way to the creative section where we have the blur tool. In the blur tool, we're going to use the Gaussian blur and just take the amount and bring it up. How much of it is again up to you. I don't want to go crazy because I don't want to completely lose the shape of the houses, but I'm thinking just maybe somewhere around here, 12 or 15. Yeah, maybe let's go for 12. So we get a little bit of the shape or maybe touch more 14. Yeah, let's go for 14. That looks good. Okay, done with the blur. We can close that. One more time, we're going to visit the layer properties. One more time, adjust the opacity if we want more of it or less. I think a little bit extra. So let's have a look, maybe around 85. And that's that. The final step when it comes to adding the different elements is just to bring a little bit of glow, which would be presented on the image coming through that sunset on the photo here. So what we're going to do? Well, there are different ways you can do this. We're going to use the easy way. So back to layers panel, click on a plus sign again, select the overlay with the glow. And once it appears again, back to layer properties, where we're going to click on fit. So this way we get our ratio back. Now adjust the size, I think somewhere around here and position it over the area with the sun. You can make it a little bit bigger, I think around here. And once happy, back to layer properties increase the opacity to 100 and one more time from normal blend mode into the screen. So that looks cool, right? We get the glow there. If you think that it's a little bit too strong, just take the opacity slider and bring it down. I think somewhere around here. Close the layer properties. Let's have a look at it. And I think it looks cool. Let's have a look at the before and after. And we are almost there. Now to really finish the look, we need to blend all the layers together and apply some global adjustments. Now with the new update of Luminar Neo, we can now do it in the app. So let's try. We have the layer with the glow selected. Now we're going to hold command or control and we're going to select the reflection as well as the subject. Once we do that, we can right click on our selection and choose merge layers. Now let's give the application a moment and what it's going to do, it's going to create a new layer with all the layers blended together. With that being done, as you notice, we have the new layer here. We can hide the layers under, so we can just right click on them and select hide layer. And with the new layer selected, we can now apply some global adjustments. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to play around a little bit with the light. And for that, we're going to do or use a simple vignette tool. So into the main editing toolbar, vignette tool in the essential section, and just bring the amount down quite heavily. I'm thinking around minus 60. And once it's done, click on choose subject and just position it in such a way that it looks 
that the brighter area is around the sun there. So we're creating a little bit of grayer or darker area here. Let's have a look. I think just probably around here. Quickly double check the before and after, and you can see that it already looks much more interesting. So that's the vignette too. Let's close it. After this, the next thing we can do to make it a little bit more cinematic and blend it together is to apply cinematic grain. Now to do that, we need to go into the creative section, then into the film grain, and with the amount slider, be careful with it, don't overdo it because then it's just crazy. But I think probably somewhere between five or 10 usually works very well. It's almost not visible, but trust me, it works to bring everything together. After the film grain, you probably could guess which tool we're going to use because I use it on all my edits. And yes, it's the simple mystical tool. Mystical tool combine multiple different edits and enhancements together, like a glow, warmth and everything. And it will help us with the image as well. Now, don't overdo it. It just looks crazy, but I think probably around 16 will help us too. And finally, little unusual tool, but tool that will make it a little bit more believable. And that's the atmosphere tool. So for this, we need to go into the landscape section where we're going to open the atmosphere AI. Now we can go for the fog or mist in our mod tool, but let's just stick with the fog and increase the amount. Now, by doing that, you will see that we will get a little bit of that overcast or fade over our sky. By default, the application actually try to avoid people, so it's human aware. But when we take the depth slider and increase it, it will start to apply everywhere. So I'm thinking around here. Now, this is too strong. We need to bring it back. But I think just, just around, let's have a look, 20 or maybe less, maybe 15. Let's quickly check before and after. Just makes it all a little bit more believable. One more check before and after after. So with that, we can close the atmosphere tool. And really, it's time to look at the before and after. Quick check, before and after. And just like that, with the help of two additional layers, with the reflection and with the go, we, and with the glow, we have created this really cool scene where it looks like the lady is sitting in front of the window, which has a reflection of this skyline on it. Now, by the way, if you're a little bit rusty about how to use overlays or how to use the blend modes, then we have both tutorials already available on our YouTube channel and you can watch them right now. So don't get stuck, continue learning, enhance your editing possibilities by continuing with more editing tutorials on our YouTube channel at Clever Photographer.